thousands of zucchini gave up their lives to create this zucchini flower. Let me show you how to do it yourself. Hey folks, it's Darcy from the Purposeful Pantry and welcome to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to take all those zucchini that you're bringing in from your garden or from the store and creating shredded zucchini that you can use all year long in any cooking that you do, as well as making zucchini flour that you can actually use this in your baking, just like using flour. Uh, and let me show you how to do it. Okay, I have already washed all of my zucchini. Whether or not you have bought them from the store or whether you've grown them yourself, always rinse them off because you've got hands all over them, you've got dirt all over them, you've got bugs on them. You can choose whether or not to go ahead and peel these first or not. Uh, I do not, I let them go. Even, even though these are store purchased because we couldn't grow them this year, um, let them soak in water, give them a good wipe off with your, with your rag or a very, very soft uh, sponge and then go for it, okay? So my tip to you, normally when I would do something that's gonna require my hands being really close to the grate here, I'll wear uh, my uh, safety cutting glove that I use my mandolin, but a tip that I have for you with doing zucchini, so if you use this as the handle, There's our safety, okay, just like that. So that one zucchini, let's pull this out so you can see about how much that is. Um, I, I can't judge if this is a medium zucchini or a large zucchini, depending on how it's, I would say most of these are mediums. I'm using cups instead of, I'm using wet instead of dry, but this is gonna help go faster. So this was approximately two, just about two cups, a little, just barely over two cups, okay? So that is usually probably within most zucchini bread recipes or zucchini muffin recipes. You might have anywhere from a cup to two cups. But what I'm gonna do is I will dehydrate this separately on a tray by itself so that when I'm done, I can measure about how much it is in uh, dry, so I know how much dry this is, and I will have a frame of reference for when I'm doing recipes down the road. Keep that one separate and then this is going to be a very long afternoon of shredding and shredding and shredding. Now of course I'm sure many of you are saying why don't you get your food processor out and just do this quickly. I'm doing it this way because I know a lot of you don't have a food, um, a food processor. So I'm just gonna show you, this is probably gonna take me less than 10 minutes to do all of this. Um, it's just gonna take a little strength, you know, to get through all of them. So don't be daunted by the fact that you've got a lot to do. If you have a food processor that allows you to shred, then do it, because that will make this go much faster. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my bowl empty and then I'm gonna move on to, to the next, you know, just keep going at, at this because if I do all of this, I can store a bowl full in the refrigerator overnight until this patch is done, reload it the next morning and start all over. So here we, oh, wait, first, my first one is gonna be this. That way I have it. Easily, a kasori fits two cups of zucchini easily. I can get more on here if I want to pack it in, but this gives me an idea of what two cups worth of zucchini will be like when it's dry. It, you, can, you can kind of pack this because um, zucchini will shrink up a lot. All right, it's going to shrink up quite a bit. And what you can do is as it dries, you can go through and kind of stir it up a little bit to make sure there are no patches where it's not drying quickly uh, and just give it a little more time. But you don't have to be fussy about spreading it out exactly.
Okay, we are going to dry at 125F, 52C. For, I'm gonna set it ahead of time because I know it's not gonna take 17 hours, but I don't use the timer. I start checking it about the six hour mark. Uh, but at the three hour mark, I will come through and just kind of shake it up and get it stirred up. And so third batch of dehydra I mean, of zucchini within 24 hours. Um, this is the two cup measurement that we put out uh, to test. So this is what two cups of zucchini looks like. But what we're gonna do is go through here and break this up. and get a very loose idea of what this looks like volumetrically from two cups of dried. And yes, it's messy, but I'm in a hurry. It's okay. Try to get all of it back onto the tray if possible to make sure I get the bulk of it in there. And let me get my glasses because I can't read anything. So we have about a half a cup of. Every morning I come in, this bowl seems to have replenished itself. The never ending chore of shredding zucchini for long term storage. Here we go another bowl, another day. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about conversion. What I have here is one quart of um, shredded zucchini that's dried, not quite. I think this quart was a little fuller than this one, uh, but it's approximate, it's not gonna be exact. Um, no way to make any of this exact unless you're measuring zucchini per zucchini uh, from the process of it being dried all the way through the measurement at the end, uh, which in my new book, The Dehydrating Basics uh, and Journal for Beginners book will have a place where that you can actually write down the yields of all of your projects and all of the, the instruction pages. Okay, quick plug for the sponsor of this video. Um, all right, so now um, what I have here is six cups of dehydrated zucchini um, shreds, which is approximately equal to 24 cups of raw shredded zucchini which depending on the recipe that you use, if most recipes call for two cups of zucchini, that's about 12 loaves of bread uh, or 12 recipes that call for two cups. But since some recipes just call for a medium zucchini or some call you know, for two zucchinis, you have to just, you're gonna have to learn how to kind of judge it that way um, based on it. But one um, regular medium zucchini that's what i use and i have like a little chart on my website on uh, eight ways to dehydrate zucchini i'll leave the link down in the description box below and then what the, the reference is for how this dries down and you can see the equivalencies of all the different kinds of zucchini all right so and then i have one extra quarter cup that's set aside um, and i'll pull some out of here too that i'm going to rehydrate in a minute so that you can see what it looks like to rehydrate it to use it in a recipe so what I'm gonna do now is take each of these and I'm gonna put them in each, uh, switch these, because that's how it's gonna go. Uh, the smaller amount's gonna go in my Nutri Ninja, uh, my large amount's gonna go in my Vitamix. I do not, all right, I'm just gonna pour this in. And look at that, without making much of a mess, go Darcy. Because those of you who've been around here for a while know how I make messes, then we're gonna do this. Ooh, that might be a little much for the Nutri Blade, okay. Okay, just like when you're doing other powders, especially if you're doing uh, pepper powder or mushroom powder uh, or anything like that, don't ever stop your machine and then immediately just open it up because that powder needs time to kind of settle in your jar or you're gonna have it all over the place or you're gonna inhale it all. What I have here is the powder from the Vitamix of all the zucchini powder. And that powder, if you take all into consideration, I've got a little bit left in the grinder, or in the blender, sorry, came out to approximately, so that four cups came out to about a cup of flour. 
So I can't even tell you for sure how many zucchini went through this process because it was a lot. What I use is an art fan brush that I got. You can use like a silicone pastry brush. You can use whatever you'd like, but this one kind of fits most everything I have. So it's just one tool and I don't have to store a bunch. Um, but what you're gonna wanna do is go through here and just use your brush to get out all that extra powder and save it, you know, because your zucchini gave its life for this. We gotta, you gotta use it all up. So the powder from this is super fine. I see no clumps. I see no, no seeds, no spaces where the, the skin didn't do well. This turned out just fine. So even if you don't have that dry blade, that's how well this turned out in a Vitamix. And I let it go for a little while. I didn't let it just run and then stop when it looked well. I probably gave it about two or three minutes of just solid running on high. Oh, a tip that many of the viewers will give when I'm doing any of these kind of powders and I start to talk about powders getting on my lid, which I don't care about. That brush helps me clean off everything. Some people will take a piece of plastic and put it over here, then put their cap on, do everything so it stays within the pitcher instead of getting on the, the lid. I don't bother because I don't feel like that's a step I need to take. I'm happy using my brush just to get stuff off instead of wasting some plastic, but you can do that. Just some plastic wrap over here will keep everything contained within the pitcher. All right, so we don't have quite as fine of a grind. You can still see what looks, you can still see skin, okay? But it's not big clumps of skin. You just see that it's not quite as fine. And I could have probably done this a little bit longer, but because I'm not going to be doing pasta with this, um, I really don't make my own pasta right now. I don't need it any finer than this because this is just gonna go into bread. It's gonna go into muffins. It's gonna be just fine. And any kind of uh, clump that's in there is going to absorb water and it will bake out. So I'm not concerned about any of that and I don't have large skin pieces. So that's what you would have to worry about is if you still saw large clumps of skin um, in there, then that's something that you would wanna grind it some more and get it finer, but this is perfectly fine. Just a little bit, probably between a third and a fourth of a cup of powder from the Ninja. So that was two cups went to that part and this is four cups went to just shy of a cup. Now the reason is, is because this is finer, so it's gonna compact more than this is, and that just that will make the difference of what your final volume is, which is why if you're really concerned about that, that you should, you should measure by weight, I'm never that concerned about it, so I don't. Um, but that would be helpful. But if you can see the difference here in the fineness of the grind, this is still just perfect. This is a much finer grind. So if you're really concerned about something that's uh, a little more unforgiving for texture, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you get it good and ground. But this will work for any bread and muffin recipe, you're not gonna notice this at all. Now you can see the color difference too because you're gonna see a little bit more of the skin still in this because it's not quite as fine of a grind. This is a little more yellow, but I'm still going to measure them. Still gonna store them together because it does not bother me. And I could just put this back in the Vitamix and just give it another good uh, couple of minutes in there to grind it up more. But again, I'm not gonna do that because I don't, I don't need it that ground ground that well. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this quarter cup that I originally pulled out. This one quarter cup is approximately equal to one cup of shredded zucchini. And because most recipes will call probably for two cups of shredded zucchini, then I'm gonna put a half a cup of shredded zucchini here. And then I'm gonna put some water in it. Now here's where I've got it. I've got water. I've put just enough to cover the zucchini and it's probably gonna need a little more. Because what we're looking for is to rehydrate the zucchini um, and make sure that it has enough to fully. Okay, so that you can see what this looks like. Here are our, this is our zucchini shreds that has been fully dehydrated. I mean, rehydrated. Can you see the color in that water? So what I would do is before you actually start making your recipe, use this excess water to put into your recipe. So if you're making bread and it calls for however much water, you're gonna add this first and then use whatever water it calls for to fill up to the recipe requirement. Because this is full of some of the vitamins that have been leached in the rehydrating process. This happens when you're making things for soups and stews. Use this to put into the water, don't waste this. Okay, so what I have here, is also, I wanted to show you that this is a little denser than if you just shredded this. Um, if you shredded it and it was still raw shredded and, and I and you saw a, a photo of it this next to, to the raw, which I didn't think to do, but you know, next time I'll try to remember to do that. 
this will be less dense. So while it does reabsorb the water, the cell structure doesn't come back exactly the same, but you're still looking at about the same amount. If you want to adjust a little bit because you want a little bit more as you can eat, you can do that too. This is pretty forgiving. While cooking recipes, you can alter as much as you want. Baking recipes still require some sense of chemistry to make things work. Thanks, Zoe, for your input. Um, but what you don't want is to add a bunch more and not alter your recipe some. But if you have to add like a little bit more here because you just want some more zucchini, it's okay to add a little bit more. Sorry, my cat is doing stuff. All right, so we're going to do this. We are going to allow this to drain off. We're going to capture that water. So this is the water that you would put into your recipe. Now, if you're concerned about things like, is this going to make my bread turn a little green? It's going to a little bit. It's going to affect the, the, the color of things. And that's why if you put this in your pasta, your pasta won't stay just the same pale yellow pasta color if you use just uh, regular flour. Um, this will have a bit of a green tint to it. And that's okay. Hold on just a second. Let me check on my cat. Okay, she wants outside. I can't let her outside. Uh, sometimes I take her on a walk out into the backyard so she can eat greens, but I can't do that right now. So she's just going to sit there and beg. So excuse that. All right. So now if your recipe calls for your zucchini to be uh, uh, wrung dry, so they want it to be dry, you would still take this same zucchini and just wring it dry. How dry it needs to be is whatever your recipe calls for. Okay, so make sure that you're doing that in the beginning as you learn how to use these and alter them. And something if you're if you want to do zucchini without the skin, you can you can peel this up front. I don't remember if I said that earlier because it's been this video has been a few weeks in the making as I've been drying more and more zucchini for us to have in stock, but also to have enough to do this video. Okay, so there we have now dried, wrung out, dry, dehydrated, rehydrated zucchini. All right, so the next question is going to be, how do you use this, okay? For any regular bread recipe, if you're doing muffins, if you're doing cakes, if you're doing breads that, that have zucchini as the component, just do your conversion. One medium zucchini equals about two cups uh, fresh shredded equals about, let me try that again. Let me go through, I'm gonna put that chart right here so that you can see. So one, so this right here is about two cups of shredded zucchini. Now you may find that it's gonna be a little, if you put it into your container, it's gonna be a little less than two cups because it's been so compacted compared to if it was fresh, but you're looking at approximately two cups, okay? Then with the powder, when you're using zucchini flour in a recipe, you want, might wanna start off with some keto recipes first that use coconut flour, uh, because my friend Victoria over at A Modern Homestead suggests that uh, zucchini flour can be exchanged for coconut flour one-to-one. -one. So you can, whatever it calls for coconut flour, you can use the same amount of zucchini flour. However, zucchini flour does not replace one-to-one -one regular flour that you use in most bread recipes because this doesn't have the gluten in it. This doesn't have the same quality that regular flour does when those recipes were made. You may be able to find some recipes online that are specifically for zucchini flour that have a different ratio because they've been created to do mostly zucchini flour. I think a common sense homestead has uh, a common sense home has a uh, a chocolate zucchini cake. I think that she does mostly out of zucchini flour. I'll try to remember to put that down below, but you can also just uh, Google that a common sense home uh, zucchini cake. I think that's what she calls it, uh, chocolate zucchini cake. All right, you can replace the flour content with about take out about. Uh, a third of a cup of that flour and replace it with a third of a cup of zucchini flour. So you're not just exchanging all of your flour back and forth, you're taking a portion out of your regular flour, taking it out and replacing that amount with this flour and go up to about a half a cup, I mean a third of a cup. You can alter with it as you start to play with recipes and see if you can go a little higher if you'd like uh, because zucchini flour will give you some more nutrients that, that whole wheat flour, I mean that regular flour doesn't. Um, and it also takes away some of the glycemic index of, of flour um, for those of you who are trying to cut back on some of that, um, but, but don't replace it one for one because it won't work that way. However, with flour replacement for doing something like a pasta, you're gonna wanna, that ratio should be much lower. So if you're doing, let's say, I can't, I don't make pasta, but from what I read from people who do, that you're gonna wanna look at like a one to nine ratio for flour or one to 10 even. 
that you're you're just replacing it with a couple of tablespoons of flour not a whole cup requirement so for any of you who make pasta with zucchini flour or any other kind of vegetable flours for coloring or more please comment down below what your experience is so that everybody can learn from what you're already doing because pasta is just not my thing and I'm, I'm not a pasta maker now I know what you're going to ask next after we've done all that work at dehydrating our zucchini and creating zucchini flour you're going to say well how do I use it here you go these are chocolate chip zucchini muffins made with dehydrated zucchini and zucchini flour replacing part of the flour content. They are super good. There you go. You can hardly see the zucchini. So that's a good way to hide it from your kids as you're introducing this to them. If you're doing back to school snacks, make just add some cocoa powder. And if you wanna learn how to make these muffins, check out the video right here. And until I see you again next time, happy dehydrating and happy baking and happy back to school or happy Christmas or happy whatever you make them for. I'll see you again next time.